This is an explanation of Derek and Newton's second law. So Derek basically says that force equals mass times velocity, and Newton says that force equals mass times acceleration. So looking at Derek's example here, you're driving down the highway in a car. Uh, so you're exerting a force. You press down on the accelerator, so you're exerting a higher force, and you move to a constant higher but constant velocity. You're exerting a higher force, but you're remaining constant. Uh, and here's the diagrams for that. So that seems to make sense. Uh, in a real-world example, that's what we have experience with. Let's just look at this example here that supports Newton of you should jump off a 100 and a 10-meter cliff. This example is a lot better because you're isolating for um, one force, just gravity. So here's my examples. As you can see, uh, this is Newton, according to Newton, this is according to Derek for the 110 meter. So the specific number don't, doesn't really matter. What does matter is um, the differences. So here you're falling at 14 meters per second after the 10 meter cliff, according to Newton, and after a 100 meter cliff you're going to be falling at 44 meters per second. Now that makes sense. It starts off that you're falling slowly, but you slowly increase um, in your velocity. And that's what this velocity diagram shows here. But what Derek says is that basically it doesn't matter how far you fall, you're always going to be going at 9.81 meters per second. Not only that, but you're immediately, as soon as you step off the cliff, you're immediately going at 9.81 meters per second. When this says, it'll take one second to get to that. So intuitively, we know that uh, Newton has to be correct here because after 100 meters, after 1,000 meters, you're going to be falling faster. You're not still going to be falling 9.81 meters per second.